Hi there, grade eights. Uh, welcome to today's lesson. So this is lesson five of chapter one. Um, today we are going to be talking about everybody's favorite, Pythagoras' theorem. Um, so we're going to kind of go through how the uh, theorem came about, how it works, and then how a little bit of how to apply it. Um, but the, the majority is just trying to understand um, how it works and how it was kind of came, how it was uh, developed. So when you have a right angle triangle, okay, so that means you have a triangle that has a right angle as one of the angles. Okay, we can actually do something with this and we can try to expand the triangle a little bit more. So we've been talking about um, using squares and square roots. So what we have here is we have three lengths. Okay, so we're going to just use numbers. So we're going to say if this one is five, let's call this one four and this one three. All right, so that's the length of each of the sides. So when we're talking about a triangle, we've got a couple of things that you need to know. Um, the longest length, or the side that's opposite of the 90 degree angle, okay, that's going to be called our hypotenuse. Okay, as you can see, this one has a distance of 5, so 5 centimeters or whatever you want to call it. And then what we have, which are adjacent or beside or attached to the uh, 90 degree angle is we have what are called legs. Uh, and in this situation, one leg has a distance of four and the other leg has a distance of three. Um, so what can, we, what can we do from there? Well, we can actually make each of these into squares. Okay, so that means we can have square one, we can have, which will be blue, we can have square two, which will be green, and then oops, square three. So when we're looking at each one of these squares, what can we say? Well, we can say that because they are squares, that this distance is the same as this distance, which is the same as this one, which is the same as this one. And they're all at 90 degree angles. Okay. And then if we go to our four, we can say the same thing. And these are all 90 degree angles. So this distance is the same as this one, which is the same, which is the same. And for our smallest one, we can say all these side lengths are the same with 90 degree angles. Okay? So we know that they're all true squares, which is perfect because that's what we want anyways. Now. What if we are to calculate the area that's within each of those squares? Okay, well, let's do that. So, uh, we'll, start with, uh, we'll start with our smallest one. So, if we have a side length of 3, that means our base and our height are all going to be 3. So, our area here is going to be 9 centimeters squared. We're just assuming that we're going to talk about centimeters. Okay, or our area is 9. Hey. 9 is one of our perfect squares that we talk about. Okay, here we have, uh, so it's going to be 4 times 4, okay, to find the area of this square. So we're going to have uh, an area of 16, uh, we'll say centimeters squared. Okay, so that's our area. And then for our last one, we have 5 times 5. Okay, 5 times 5 gives us 25 centimeters squared. So each of those lengths are the same. Now, what we kind of figured out is that we can actually add the area of some of the sides together. So if we add the area of the leg plus the area of this leg, so we have 16 plus 9 gives us 25. All right. So I'll say that again. So we have 16 plus 9 gives us 25. The same thing, if we were to have the, the hypotenuse, the area of the square of the hypotenuse, and we wanted to subtract the area of one of the leg squares, okay, we'd be able to find 16. Okay, so 25 minus 9 equals 16, or 25 minus 16 equals 9. So it works out every single way that we want it to. So as we're looking at this example, just get a little bit more light here. Um, as we're looking at this example, 
we can see that the area or the sum of the squares of the legs, so the sum of the squares, so when we add them together, okay, so we have the square of 9 and the square of 16, the sum of the squares of the legs equals the sum of the square of the hypotenuse. The sum of the square of the hypotenuse. So this is kind of the relationship um, that we're going to be working on for the next little bit. Um, so when you see a triangle, you can draw out uh, the squares and you can try to figure out what the areas are uh, for the squares. So let's do, uh, let's do an example together. So, if we have our triangle, okay, let's say we have something like this. So we have our squares. This is a 90 degree angle. I'm just going to use all black for this example here. This is quite off. So let's fix it. All right, that looks a little bit better. Let's say that this here has an area of 100 centimeters squared. Right? Let's say that this one has an area of 36 centimeters squared. What can we think or what can we determine that the area of this one's going to be? Well, we can simply go, we have the length of our hypotenuse, it's our longest line. Okay, so we're going to go, normally we would go um, our length of our square of our hypotenuse equals our leg plus our limb. Okay, and I'll go, I'll do kind of like an L. A cursive L for that one. So we have our hypotenuse equals our leg plus our leg. So we can put in the information that we have. Well, we have our hypotenuse, we have 100 equals, we have 36 plus one of our legs. Okay. Um, now, I want to try to get the leg by itself. So what can I do? I can subtract 36 from both sides. Minus 36, minus 36. Okay, that's gone. Now I actually do the math, and I'm getting 64 equals the length or the area of my leg. So I can determine that this one is 64 centimeters squared. All right, so that becomes my area. Okay, so that's an example uh, of one that that can work. Now, what if you don't have the area? Okay, what if we don't have the area? So let's say we have um, a similar triangle, okay? Um, let's say that we have uh, distances of, let's go uh, four and two. And then this one, we don't know, okay? So this is our side length. This isn't the area now. So we can't just go four plus two equals six. It doesn't work that way. We have to do what is the area, okay? So what would the area of this one be? Well, it'd be four times four, so that would give me 16 centimeters squared. Okay, this one is two, so that would give me four centimeters squared. Then I add these two together. So my hypotenuse equals my length plus my length, the areas. So it equals 16 plus four. So my, hop, my area of my hypotenuse equals 20. So I can say that the area of this um, area, sorry, the area of the square is going to be 20 centimeters squared, if I was to draw the squares over top of each of them, okay? Um, this is a concept that I know you all look at and you're like, hey, what's the real life application? When are we going to use it? And I have actually had students in the past um, use it without, uh, like not even being in math class. So like teaching a woodworking class, um, I had a student, for example, who was trying to build a bookshelf that was going like this and this and this, and they were trying to figure out where they could actually put uh, the, the, the connections so that they would have their center of balance all the way in the middle. So they actually ended up using Pythagoras' theorem to calculate exactly where they were supposed to go. So that is one kind of simple real world application. All right. So I'm going to give you guys some questions to work on. Um, bring your questions that you may have or concerns about Pythagoras' theorem uh, to the Zoom chat. Um, if you have any other questions, Message me on Hangouts. Good luck.